Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. This week we'll be singing, jumping, and enjoying inspirational art. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Okay, today I want to start with one email. Michelle Feldman from Orlando wrote, I want to know how you thought of the name Israeli Salad and how you thought of doing this show. So I'll tell you, a few months ago we were thinking, we give you a daily update of the news from Israel and we also produce features about different topics in Israel. We decided that it's also very important to let you have a weekly peek into the cultural life here in Israel. Now when you come to cover Jewish life in Israel, you find a large mixture of cultures and styles. In Hebrew, a mixture of things is sometimes referred to as a salad, Israeli salad. Okay, let's get the show on the road. First, I'd like to take you to a family attraction on the hills of Jerusalem. In the middle of the tree-covered mountains near the entrance to Jerusalem is the Kibbutz of Tzoba. Entering the Kibbutz, you can't miss the colorful Kiftzuba site. Kiftzuba is a family entertainment center. It is for all the family from one year old to 15 year old for the children and of course the parents and adults play with the kids together. Uh, we are the main uh, family attraction in the Jerusalem area. It's not nearly the size of Disney but the Kiftsuba site has a large variety of activities for the whole family. I first entered a big hall. I was surprised by the amount of children gathered under one ceiling playing with dozens of games and activities. Air hockey, video games for the young, and younger, a bath full of Legos, and many, many more attractions. The planners of the site didn't forget to set aside picnic tables so the family, and especially the parents, could stop, rest, and have a bite to eat. From there I went out to meet some animals in the petting zoo, while nearby, children and parents were taking a short ride on bumper cars. I then went back indoors, passed by the sounds and lights bursting from the arcade games, and arrived at the Kiftsuba skating ring. So, how are you doing here? Okay, it's really fun, especially the ice skating and the big blow of things, the slide. It's really fun. Okay, have fun, bye. Thank you, bye. The name Kiftsuba not only comes from the name of the kibbutz, Tsoba, but also means in Hebrew, jump in it. I concluded my visit at the central attraction, a number of large inflated trampolines and slides where the children just kept on jumping, jumping, and jumping. Of course, we're planning to develop again next year. It's still confidential, I can't tell you what it is. So remember, next time you come visiting near Jerusalem, jump over to Kiftzuba. Okay, we'll be back in a moment with the singer Chaim David, who I met in the old city of Jerusalem. Chaim David's new album, by the way, is coming out very soon. So, why did you come to Israel? To be with my family, to support Israel, and we love Israel, and uh, to support the Jewish community worldwide. Welcome back. We are now joined by Chaim David Sarechik, a uh, leading Hasidic Jewish music singer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Yoni. So first of all, tell us about yourself. Okay, born and uh, grew up in New York, uh, New York in uh, South Africa, Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, till the age of 19. Came to Israel as a volunteer, as a volunteer in the kibbutz for, you know, eight, ten months. That was the time of the Yom Kippur War, which is very deep and inspiring. Painful, but it's very enriching experience. So I got a taste of what, you know, from the word go, what Israel is about. Were you into music then already? Oh, yeah. Uh, music's been with me for many, many years. Which, uh, Any religious Jewish uh, music? No, that came well, later. That came later. Basically, I found uh, myself seeing Rav Shlomo Kalbach in a concert in Europe, in Amsterdam. And there he was, in the swimming concert. Didn't know anything about him. So I learned the first the first test, taste of real 
you know, real, you know, current Jewish music, which is... So, uh, right, so before we talk about your music, what's unique about uh, Rav Shlomo Karlibach, Zecher Tzadik Libracha, what, about his music? His music is a novea mea lev, mea lev ma nefesh, mea pnimes, it comes out of his deepest depths. He was singing from the love of Israel, the love of Hashem, and the depth of the Torah, you know, from everything that he saw in the Torah he was portraying. Once I saw Reb Shlomo, so then it couldn't be like a commercial, you know, setup. I couldn't go the commercial route, you know, what makes them, the, you know, the sweetest, the most, you know, current sounds in the, in the current music world. That wasn't interesting to me whatsoever. It had to be the songs from the Pneumius, from the soul, from that I learned and heard from my Rebbe. Um, I, want, I want to ask you about uh, one of uh, the most famous songs, your song, uh, I don't even know what, what the title is. Uh, we know it as Yamamai. It's yeah, a nigun, yeah. which means it's, it doesn't have any words. So first of all, about the, 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 the concept of a nigun. What does it mean to sing without, without any words? Okay, so the, the, the real, it's a good, a good question, a very, very good question. The, the, for instance, I explain, Chabad, you know, the Chabad Hasidim don't sing songs in Zmir's Shabbos. They sing niguns. The reason they say is that Shabbos is so holy that you can't even use words in the Avoida. Even words are too, are too are already mitzam tzim. They cutting it into a, 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 a genre that you might not want. You just want the, the realest, most purest expression from the soul out is the nigan. That's the first thing. Wow, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You're just giving out some out utterance, an utterance, and that's the closest you can get from the pnimius of the ben adam. The word already is making you, already putting you in a, th a certain thought. He's thinking about the words. What is he saying? What is, what's, the pr what's the praise? What's the prayer? So, so where, where did you word? think of this Yamamai uh, Nigun? A big Matana. It's a big, it's a big gift. I didn't know how I came out. Came to, I was walking these streets, the holy streets of Yerushalayim. So uh, tell us about uh, living here in the Jewish Quarter. Because people come to visit all the time, our viewers come here, but how is it living Mamish near the Kotel? The Divine Presence, the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence, in many ways of translating it, it dwells constantly in this holy place. Okay, so, so we'll be back uh, near the end of the program with some tunes, but uh, until then, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be back in the studio right after this. What does the Western Wall mean to you? Every time I come here, I, and I touch the wall, this limestone that's been here for, you know, over 2,000 years, I just feel the energy that millions upon millions of Jews have come to over the years and prayed for. And I feel like I'm taking part in the experience that every Jew pretty much in, in the world at some point has taken the journey here and done. And as I touch the wall and I pray at the wall and I put my note and I feel connected with every Jew that has ever lived pretty much. And that's what the Kotel means to me. Dov Lederberg, originally from Philadelphia, is an artist who lives with his wife in Jerusalem. Dov regards himself as a Jewish visionary artist. He combines Kabbalistic concepts in his work. Mark Kaplan went to visit the Lederbergs. Shalom, I'm standing outside the home and studio of Dov Lederberg and Yael Aviona. And today we're going to take a look at some of the works of, uh, of Dov Lederberg. So come on, let's take a look. Welcome to our uh, hacienda, our studio, our home. We are uh, working very intensively in what we call Jewish art, but we're using a, uh, I think, in a novel way, uh, modern forms. One of the areas which I've worked out in the past very intensively has been the, the Hebrew letters, particularly the, the scribal letters as they're seen in the Torah, which is one of the basic forms uh, uh, very important uh, motivating forms in Judaism itself. And here the idea is what we call the creation of the world from the letters themselves. It's an idea of yesh me'ayin, that the letters themselves became the basis of all reality, mm -hmm. as they were uttered by God, and, and the, every utterance was internal. Another, another area which I'm involved with uh, is uh, the idea of communication. And uh, I have a series this is one of a series which I call Dialogues. Here you have what you could call the idea of forms relating to each other. 
Uh, but these, these are like two forms are connected. Are you trying to connect. Here actually the experience is one of anger. There's another work which is a different, already a different, uh, uh, using almost the same stance, the same form, template, but here you have like a connection of, of love and, uh, and uh, tenderness between two people. So I'm constantly searching, being impacted by my studies in Hasidus and Kabbalah, and finding in, through an intuitive uh, process the forms that will convey what I would call uh, spiritual ideas. The ram that was used in place of Isaac, uh, the one of the horns was you heard at the time of the Har Sinai, and the other horn will be heard when the Messiah will come. The idea of prayer itself is an idea of what I call Sulam Yaakov, the, the ladder of Jacob, which is a paradigm for prayer. You're always striving to go to a higher and higher rung. So here's like an endless process of soaring, of going higher and higher, and this is what I'm trying to convey in my work. Uh, my wife and I work, we call ourselves art inspired by science and Kabbalah. That is to say, and we find that maybe a meeting ground between these two, uh, these two areas, and living in Eretz Israel is very important for us as a source of inspiration, and uh, and bringing us to a higher and higher level. For Israeli Salad in Jerusalem, this is Mark Kaplan for Israel National News. In our upcoming program, Mark will take us again to the Letterbergs to see some of Yael's art. The Jewish wedding is one of my favorite events in the Jewish cycle of life. The happiness of a wedding can sometimes intoxicate you with joy. Rabbi Samson joins us from his office in Jerusalem. Today I'd like to ask you, Rabbi Samson, about the Jewish wedding. What's all this wild rejoicing about? Shalom Yoni, and shalom to all of our listeners and watchers around the world again. Uh, Yoni, when you ask about the Jewish wedding and the ceremony, I have a thought that I really can't say I saw it anywhere in the sources, so I myself am a little bit squeamish about saying that it's 100% truth, but I still, I, I still think that it's worth saying out loud, and it's a thought that I have. Here in Israel, the weddings are really happy, and that everybody is dancing, and that it, it's a pandemonium of happiness, and that very often the parents have to demand a little more decorum from the participants because they just sing and dance and it's very difficult to have uh, uh, the wedding procession in an organized fashion because of the pandemonium of happiness. And I'm talking about Jewish Orthodox weddings that are held outside of Israel have a much more solemn kind of tune to them and that everybody is sitting down Everybody has a, a very demure smile on their face. And uh, the bride and the groom walk slowly up the aisle. And everyone ha is listening to very um, serious music. And I'm wondering if it's not rooted in a completely different understanding of what a wedding really is about. And that there is a side that each family is severing a heightened relation with their daughter and with their son and that now their daughter and their son are going to live with someone else rather than being at home and there is a bit of a solemn occasion however together with this there is the joy of building a new home in Israel and that uh, it's the greatest sign of life when uh, a man and a woman find each other and are able to uh, relate to each other in the union of marriage I mean what can be greater than that and that the happiness in Israel overrides the solemn, somber kind of mood. And as a result, uh, everybody is just in a pandemonium of happiness. Being an Israeli, I of course uh, understand and uh, I myself also find myself swept away in a pandemonium of uh, singing and dancing at the weddings because uh, I understand the happiness that uh, the entire Jewish people have from the new married couple. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. Before we go back to Chaim David, I'd like to mention that my email is waiting for your comments, ideas, and any question you might have about life here in Israel. So don't go away. We'll be back in a moment with Chaim David Unplugged. So, why did you come to Israel? 
Well, I'm on a program with uh, my youth movement, Young Judea, and we're here to see Israel, the entire country. Okay, I'm David. Yes, my friend. As we promised our viewers, a few notes before we end our program. So what are we going to be singing now? This is to him 69, the very end. David Amelech was prophesying that at the end of days, the Yidin, Am Yisrael, would once again come live in the cities of Judah. And who goes to live there? You, know, you might say, ah, obviously the people who live there are the Giborim, the great warriors, or great Talmudei Chachamim, the great sages and scholars, or maybe great Tzaddikim. David Mel says something so different. He says, no, the people who live in those cities, Anavim, Aniim, Evionim, Amish the lowest, like people are most wretched, Anavim, Anavim, humble people, and um, people like nothing, they have nothing, they have no money to live, they have no, no way of making things ends meet, right? Not the rich people, not the, not the rich people. These are the people who are living in the Are Yehuda, cities of Judah. So this is David's revelation. I was so moved by these words, and Hashem Yisbarak gave me this nigga, and this is it. much for joining us. Thank you, Yanni. And all our viewers, join us again next week with another edition of Israeli Salad.
Yeah, baby. 